Finally, in this chapter we have a brief module on how you can go about selecting a program to be run at a certain time during the day. So, it is possible to schedule a command to be run at a particular time in the future. You can actually specify an entire set of commands to be run at that time. That time is usually specified with, as within the next 24 hours, but you can actually specify it to happen on any given day at any given time. The command that we use for that is called at, as in at the following time, run the following commands. And its usage is as follows. At your shell prompt, you type in something like at a given time, like at 23.15, which would be 11.15 p.m. And then you're presented with a little greater than prompt. And what you do is you type in all the commands that you want to run at 23.15. You type them one after the other, one on each line, just as if you were typing them into the shell. Note that it is not wise to assume that you're in any particular directory, so the fir very first thing you might want to do is cd into the directory that you want to be in. Then you can run the programs, and finally, when you've typed in the names of all the programs that you want to run, type in, as before, Control d Remember, Control d means I don't want to type anything further at this point. And then you'll be given your dollar prompt back. If any of those commands produce standard output, they are all collected together and emailed to you, interestingly enough. And we'll have a look at how to access your email in a later chapter. For now, let's have a look at an example of all of that. So, uh, I might type in at, uh, let's say, 10.30 p.m., which, which would be 22.30, and then I get a little at prompt, and I simply type in the names of the programs that I want to do. So I might go cd slash home slash mvirtue slash course, and then I might uh, tar all those files up into a file called uh, files.tar and then that might be all I want to do. So then I type control D and there we go. And I get a little warning. Commands will be executed using slash bin slash sh. That means that I will not be using any other shell than just the regular born shell to run those commands. Which means of course that I can't type in any commands that are specific to the bash or any other shell. It's kind of nice the way they tell you this after you've typed in all the names of your commands. Anyway, you're given a job number and you're told exactly the date and time that it's going to happen. Now, if you recall from the chapter on standard input and standard output, it is possible to get the standard input that I typed into the at command, and notice that at did actually take standard input because as soon as I started the at command, it sat there waiting for me to type something, and I typed the names of the commands that I wanted to run. So at does take standard input, and we know from a previous chapter that it is possible to get that standard input from a file. So if I have a file that contains a list of all the commands that I want to run, I can simply use that in conjunction with at. So I'll just quickly create such a file. I'll call it, um, I'll call it, uh, what will I call it, commands and I'll, so I'll call that cd home m virtue slash course and tar cf files dot tar of the current directory. Now I'm using vi here and I don't expect you to know how to use vi, but that doesn't matter. The point is I've created such a file and I've called it commands. Now I can say at, and I'll specify some time, like 22.45, and then I can simply redirect the input from that file, like that. If you recall, that means get all the input that would have been typed into the at command from the file called commands. And there it is. I just It tells me that those commands will be executing executed using slash bin slash sh, and it gives me a job number and time. Now it's very interesting to note that what I've just created in that program called in that file called commands, that file is now virtually a shell script. The only thing I need to do to make it a shell script is to make it executable using the chmod command. Remember chmod, how you can add the little x to any given file? 
Well, if I cause the commands file to be executable, then I can simply run it. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. Chmod. So we'll call it u plus x commands. And then I'll just simply run commands. I'll run it as a program. It is now a program. And there we go. Theoretically, it's gone into that particular directory and created a file called files.tar. And there's a little warning message coming out of the tar program. So I'll do a little ls minus l and I'll find that there is, in fact, a file called files.tar, which was created just now. So there's a little aside proving to you how easy it is to create a shell script. Obviously, shell scripts can get significantly more complex than that, so complex, in fact, that we have an entire training course on them called Unix Shell Scripting. Anyway, that's the very standard and basic use of the at command. The at command is actually a little more complex than that. You can examine all the jobs that you've got in the queue. You can remove jobs from the queue and so on. If you want to find out how to do all that stuff, simply look in the man page for at 